So, Moment. Und zwar, ja, genau. Und zwar äh, geht es jetzt weiter zu Lukas aus Polen, unser, ich glaube, Mr. ADT Part 2. Ich glaube, alles, was die SAP keinen äh, Bock hat. Also, so if, if the SAP is not interested in developing some uh, add-ons or plugins or features or functionalities into ADT, then just give Lukas a call and he is doing everything for you. And <laughs> also in some kind of rocket time. <laughs> At least so, trying. All right. So now we are handing over, I'm handing over to you and the uh, stage is yours. Okay. Thank you, uh, Siren. Uh, I'm really glad to be here uh, today I, in our first ABAP conf. Uh, I always uh, like to share the things which I do with you because this is this is uh, one of the things which makes me happy. I mean, uh, to give back to the community. This is what I've taken in the past. Uh, so today I will speak about the ADT plugins that I have created uh, through the last two years, which I think can really help you in an adoption to um, ADT tools, because uh, as you all know, or this person could try it already, the ADT, it's not easy to switch from SEAT to uh, ADT tools if you haven't worked on any other IDE before, uh, like Eclipse, like uh, Visual Studio or, um, or any other. Uh, so. Uh, it means you have to learn some new uh, practices, uh, but this already was also mentioned by Jörg and, and Thomas, definitely. What is, um, what is um, nice in the Eclipse is that we can do our extensions uh, to, to it uh, without really uh, asking um, ACP colleagues if this is possible, without doing the changes in the um, backend system in most cases. Uh, so that's why it's really nice that we can, we can, we can do it. Uh, I will shortly switch to uh, Eclipse uh, to show you uh, our four, four plugins which I've uh, created to, to the last years. Uh, let me just try it now. This should be it. Okay, you should see my screen now. Uh, let's let's then uh, look on the plugins which I created. I will speak about the four plugins. The first one will be ABAP uh, favorites, then it will be um, ABAP extensions. Uh, as the next one, ABAP quick fix. And at the end, I will speak about the classic outline. But first of all, where to find those plugins? Uh, if you haven't, uh, if you do not know uh, so far, you have to go to the, the help menu in the Eclipse. You have to go to the Eclipse marketplace. And then from there, uh, you will, you, you will have a, a, a search possibility. So just search for ABAP and you will find all of the plugins that are available on the market uh, from the community now. So you can see that it's not only my plugins, there are also the plugins from Andreas, uh, plugins from, uh, from other colleagues uh, as well. So this is really, really nice that this community of um, developers of the ADT plugins uh, is growing. So it's not shrinking, it's growing. So this is really, really cool. So my plugins, you will notice with the with the information that it was created by ABAP blog. Uh, but uh, in some cases, of course, it was not only my work, it was also uh, supported with the with the help of the other colleagues uh, and with the, with the support of a team of Thomas as well, huh? because it was not easy as well for me to create the first plugins. But uh, let's come back to the topic of the first plugin, which is uh, ABAP favorites. Uh, this ABAP favorites uh, brings to your um, IDE two new views, uh, very similar ones. One is called favorites. The other one is called favorites uh, dev objects. Uh, but in most of the cases, I know people are using one, uh, this uh, favorites, which combine the functionality of both. What you can do in, in here, you can create your own um, structure or hierarchy, hierarchy of the favorite transactions, programs, URLs, but not only. You can also use it to store the development objects. Uh, so you may remember this uh, uh, user menu or sub menu from the uh, sub GUI. Uh, when you are switching to Eclipse, uh, and when you are running the uh, sub GUI in uh, uh, in Eclipse, you don't have that menu directly uh, on the screen uh, of the sub GUI. So sometimes you are a bit confused. Ah, I have created in the past the 
I don't know, the huge list of my favorite transactions, which we are using in, in a company on 3D development, uh, and then uh, you, are, uh, you lost it. So you can, what, with this ABAP favorites um, plugin, you can recreate it and you can, uh, you can uh, use it, it in a bit uh, different approach than in SC, uh, in SubGUI, because in a SubGUI, this all favorites are really created on the instance of the ASAP. And here in the Eclipse, you can create the favorites, which you will be used with all of the projects, all of the systems which you are working with. So as I said, the first level of the, of the, of the favorites is the folder. So we can create new folders in here. Uh, of course, you have, can give it, you have to give it a name. You, you can give it a description and you can select the type of the folder. If, for example, the folder is a project independent, it means it will appear always um, on the list. It doesn't matter which project is active here uh, currently in an ed editor. If you will not mark it, then it will be um, in default hidden uh, when you will switch between the systems. I will just uh, show it to you in a second, um, but just I will let you also uh, know what about this uh, checkbox, which is called development objects folder. Uh, as I said at the beginning, you can create two kinds of folder. One is a normal standard favorites uh, folder, which you, in which you can store the uh, favorite transactions, programs, and URLs. Um, and in the development objects folders, you can also put the programs inside uh, classes, of course, CDS views and other uh, development objects but the navigation to those objects will be different uh, depending on the folder type, if it's a development object folder or the normal one. In the normal one, when you have a transaction code uh, or program, it will run it in SE38 uh, transaction, like SE38. So like you would be running the program, not going into development, uh, into the code. When you will have it in the, uh, in the development objects uh, folder, then it will navigate to the source code. So let me just quickly show it to you. So I have uh, some old um, information, so the old uh, favorites here. Uh, when I click on the set, this is the normal folder. Oh, it's compiling, nice. So it will open the transaction in here. If I will have some programs in here, oh, let me demo regex tool it will also run the program. So, but if I am, I will go to the development objects folder and I will select one of these um, objects, I will double click, it will open the code. So we can store the objects inside uh, depending on the, on the uh, current work of yours. So you can, you can create some hierarchies uh, inside to, to have more than one level of the folders and you can store also the development objects. It's quite um, uh, useful when you have, for example, uh, a big packages in the companies like, I don't know, ZSDX or whatever. And then you know that there are really plenty of different not connected uh, uh, objects inside. Uh, and then you want to somehow um, make a hierarchy of them in your own uh, favorite list so you know uh, what objects are connected together. Of course, in the, in the, the best, uh, what I would say would be the best to create the packages for each of these uh, connected uh, objects. So for each of the uh, hierarchy, but it's sometimes not possible or you are not allowed in the company or in the customer. So as you can so as you saw, uh, this, this was opening the, uh, the object inside the editor. You can, you can create the several uh, nodes of it. So if I will create one later here. Uh, oh, it didn't appear. As always, the no effect. Yeah, okay. Sorry, normally it should work as usual. Uh, with the no effect, it doesn't work. So uh, you can create the several hier hierarchies like you can see in here, uh, which in fact, you can link both types of the uh, folder. So inside the normal folder, you can have also 
uh, development of big folder so you can make whatever structure you uh, want inside of it what it's uh, what it's good i hope this will now work let's see when i switch to older yeah uh, when i switch to other um, system than it was before you see that this uh, fury folder appeared uh, so if i will switch it back it disappeared so it's uh, it's uh, you can set it up in the customizing because this folder as if you go to the edit mode is not project independent so it's hidden uh, whenever you switch uh, the uh, active uh, system on the on the editor you can of course um, change this behavior if you go to the preferences and go to the above development and favorites you can uh, remove the checkbox that to hide the development objects folder And then it will be visible always. Uh, it doesn't matter which uh, system you're uh, acting at the moment. And what it's um, what it's nice, it's you have also information to which system it's uh, it's, it's linked. Uh, and then on double click, the normal behavior is that if the folder or the parent folder is linked to the to the system, uh, then uh, it will open it directly in the system in which it is linked to. Uh, so you don't have to switch the uh, switch the navigation between in the here in the um, uh, in the editor in order to uh, to navigate to the proper system with the transaction because in other cases for example I am here on A4H system if I will run the transaction from the uh, from the from the system from the folder which is not linked to any uh, development system then it will open in the current active system. So if I switch now to Fiori, it will open in different system. So this you can uh, really, uh, really, really switch depending on on your needs. So if uh, there will be a, a need for you to run the transaction or program, which is in the uh, in the linked folder. Uh, but you want to run it in a different system than, than this one. You can use a, a control click uh, selection. Uh, this was added by Ludwig Stockbauer Moore to this uh, to this uh, to this add-on. Uh, then you will get the selection of all your um, projects in the current workspace, and you can select on which you want to open uh, the object. It's the same with the development uh, objects uh, um, selection. Of course, you can export these uh, favorites. You can share it with your colleagues. Uh, you can search through it, uh, so it's directly uh, so it's easier to find the transactions. So if you have uh, or programs or code, whatever, if you have a a long list of uh, favorites, uh, so this is this is a very nice uh, functionality of this. Uh, Okay, so let's now switch to the to the second um, extension, which is um, which is uh, called ABAP extension. Uh, it brings two huge functionalities to uh, to to the Fury, uh, not to the Fury, sorry, to the ADT tools. First of all, uh, you are getting the uh, the passwords view, in which you can store your password to its system and mandant and user, and you can use that um, in order to do the direct login to the systems after you um, for example uh, open the eclipse workspace or when you expand the uh, the project node here on this project explorer now i'm logged in uh, but let me go to the to the settings uh, the preferences of the automatic login it's again in the above development nodes uh, but automatic login so you can choose if you want to log on automatically at start. If you uh, if you will run this function only to the systems with a stored password, because you can decide, for example, okay, I will not log into to the system which I have not stored the password, and I'm not storing the password because of whatever reason. And it's the same for the all stored users and log on automatically at the expand of the project, which means that if you do not have uh, the uh, log on automatically at start available for example then you can uh, you can uh, 
be logged in into the system when you will try to expand this, this node of the of the project. So if you have a stored password inside, then you will you will be logged in automatically. If not, then you will get the standard pop-up of the for the user and the password. Also, you have this uh, functionality at the end to ask the uh, for the possibility to store the uh, password at the at the creation of the new project. Means when you add a new ICP system into your uh, project explorer, then you will be prompted to enter the, the password and uh, to store it uh, in the system. So you can use it then later on to for automatic login. Uh, the storage of the password is done in possible in two ways. You can stay store it as a plain text or you can store it encrypted. This um, the storage of this password is not done inside the flat files or anything like this. It's stored in the Java secure storage, which means you cannot just uh, get it uh, or read it from any other places. So, so if it's encrypted, then you will not be able to read it then later on. So you can't use it for uh, to, to steal the password. So even if someone will enter your PC uh, when, you, when you forgot to lock it, then uh, the person will not be able to see the password which is inside there. But at least you know the password is stored. That's why the uh, stars are there. So this is the really nice functionality which I use uh, daily, and it's I call it my own personal uh, SSO for the Eclipse project. Uh, so it's because it works like this, uh, more or less. Uh, the other um, possibility of this extension uh, is the change of the uh, client, user, and language. Uh, I, to be honest, hate this uh, need to have uh, several projects if you want to, to use the same system with the several languages or with the several users, like you are on, in the test mode of your application and then you have to, then you have to test it with the um, users that have different uh, authorizations than yours. Uh, so you ask your basis team to create the test user and then uh, you in normally in a sub GUI, you put the credentials in. In ACP, I would need to, in SAP, in AT, I would need to normally create a separate project with that user and then to uh, to put the, all the credentials inside. But uh, as I said, I don't like it. I don't like also this old uh, project names. That's why I've added the possibility on the right click on the project to change the logon language, user and client. So. Normally, uh, the language and the client are the most used by me. In fact, the language is the, the most case. So what it's only needed, you go inside and then you pass these literals for the language like DE. And what will happen now, all open uh, tabs for this system will be closed. And uh, you will be relocked in uh, in German language. So uh, you see now it's the language was changed. If I will open SAP GUI, embed it inside. Uh, somewhere at the window with the license info is hiding. Let me kill ACP green quickly. Because in another case it will not stop. Oh, I will quickly rerun the Eclipse, just a sec. Oh, okay. So I hope Tom, uh, Thomas is seeing this. <laughs> Sometimes the problem eclipse and performance and stability. <laughs> uh, normally, it doesn't happen. Uh, it happens only on the, during the demos. Uh, so there was a license information from the um, uh, S4HANA demo system, 
which sometimes it's not appearing uh, correctly or it's hiding somewhere. And, and then you cannot click escape or enter or whatever and then to, to get rid of it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, now it's, oh, now it stopped. Let me try to kill every other possible instance of sub GUI. And try it. And in such cases, then the GUI host is, the, is stopped and then you cannot even uh, quickly re rerun the Eclipse. Uh, which is a pity. Okay, so when it's uh, when it's um, when it's uh, running, uh, I will start the. So you know, we see you, you could you could run it the, with a different language. You can use it with a different user. Quickly change it whenever you need it, and you do not need to create a several um, several uh, projects for each uh, language, each user user or each client which you are using. Um, so this was the second. Uh, the second possibility of that uh, plugin, and the next plugin, uh, which is uh, called uh, the uh, ABAP Quick Fix, but I will need to have it uh, open in order to show it to you, uh, is the extension of the standard um, standard possibilities of the Quick Fix in Eclipse. Uh, I guess uh, that uh, Thomas already showed to you uh, the Quick Fix possibilities. Uh, of course, there is lots of uh, built-in uh, one, if, especially when you create the uh, when you create the. Uh, I will stop sharing for a second. If you create uh, the classes uh, uh, inside, then in the SAP, then you have uh, really lots of them. Or when you have uh, CDS views and so on, so this really helps to speed up the uh, the development. Uh, but uh, but there are also, of course, ones which you could imagine that you could um, create by, uh, by yourself. So I did it. So okay. I've created that extension uh, to the, um, uh, for the quick fix uh, in order to provide some uh, more uh, functionalities. One of the, the first ones was to do a translation. You know, uh, we are... Uh, most cases in the old ACP code is written in German, German comments, German uh, German uh, names of the forums and everything. So if you if you if you uh, find them and then you do not know the language, uh, then you could use this quick fix. So Control One uh, to translate the selected text into English. Huh? So you could uh, you could see the overview here, and then you can click it and then you get the translated uh, comment inside. Of course, the best would be to not to have uh, any comments uh, because the code should be uh, readable without it. So we can also remove it fully uh, from, the, from the code. Uh, but there are some more, uh, some, there are some certification when you're when you refactoring the old code, then you can go inside and uh, replace some, uh, for example, the, the, uh, the call method with the direct call or uh, read tables with the assignment, or uh, to change the replace the equal sign with the with the with the uh, equal or syntax with the equal sign, or even uh, some more uh, complex uh, like uh, here we have a read table with transforming you know, fields to change to line exist for the for, for the systems with the 740 SP5, and also like this I don't know in many old uh, programs you have. Uh, lots of uh, manual creation of the field catalog and other places. So you have like this structure, and then you append it to the to the table. You can go inside in here and then change it to the uh, append value uh, format. Eh? So this is uh, really uh, really uh, helpful. Uh, the full list of the um, of the possible uh, quick fixes so you can you can uh, check on the uh, GitHub. Um, uh, project for for this uh, but uh, there are plenty of them and i know that also uh, some some colleagues are preparing the ones the new ones for uh, which will help in s4 hana adoption as well um, and the last uh, the last plugin uh, which is uh, which was created lately by me which in fact needs additionally uh, beside the uh, beside the front end installation of the Eclipse plugin, it needs also the backend uh, installation through the ABAP Git 
of the two uh, function models. Um, um, it's called classic outline. Uh, one of the biggest issues at the beginning of for the people who are switching to um, to Eclipse is that the outline is totally different than the ones in the SE80. In SE80, you had the structured one with the folders, subfolders, uh, and quick information about everything. In case of classes, you have also the information about the inherited methods, or uh, so this was really helpful. And as you can see in the standard outline of Eclipse of ADT, it's not there. That's why I've created the classic outline which is in fact calling the function model, which is used in SE80 in the backend. And then it's, uh, it's adding the same, uh, the same uh, structure of the, of the classic outline. You see, I have switched the language to German before. That's why also the, all the uh, folders, names and all this stuff, and probably also the description will be in, uh, in German, but this is only to show you the, this, how it works. So it doesn't matter at the end. What is the in favor um, of um, uh, classic outline in comparison to the normal outline is that you have also the uh, search uh, functionality here. So uh, you can quickly find the, the, um, the needed um, methods or types or attributes or whatever when, when, when you know the name and then you have uh, lots of them. Here we have a small one and in good development there is a small number of all these uh, attributes and methods and so on but if you work with some older classes where you have hundreds of uh, of methods uh, then it's very useful also when you when you look on the uh, function groups uh, or the function models when you will go to the old standard outline uh, here on the on the function group top uh, or the the main main program uh, you see only the includes if you go to the classic outline, you have the old classic information about the, each of the uh, each of the object, which is included in this uh, uh, in this function group. Of course, you can navigate as well, uh, and in most cases, it it it's works uh, without any issues. Even for the for the local classes, uh, uh, it should it should work uh, quite good. Uh, so uh, this is for from lots of people uh, a big change in the in the outline uh, it should keep also the, uh, in the navigation uh, uh, if the objects which are opening are linked uh, together so if you are opening the function models between uh, which are from the same function group uh, the menu uh, the, ex the expansion of the of this uh, outline should remain the same you have also here uh, the possibility to navigate to the elements which are not visible on the uh, standard outline like uh, din pros and uh, and gui statuses or titles huh? so this is quite huge um, change i would say in order to in, in comparison to to outline them Okay, that would be uh, that would be it. I hope that uh, even without with, with this uh, demo effect which we had, uh, you were able to see that there are some possibilities to make the, the the working with the ADT tools easier or starting to work with the ADT tools easier for you, because uh, as from my experience and also from experience of my other colleagues, when you will start it, when you will give it the time it will uh, really be more enjoyable and more efficient to work with the ADT tools in comparison to uh, SE80. So um, thanks a lot for having me. And uh, it was as always a pleasure to present it to you. Yeah? Even with the demo effect goes there. Thank you, thank you very much. The demo effect is uh, yeah, very uh, known to everybody of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, two less prayers to the demo gods in the morning, but I, I, okay, I, I, this can happen. <laughs> I didn't have time for the prayers, um, uh, but okay, uh, that's why maybe it happened. <laughs> All right, very, very big thank you to you. Um, so now.